Hey guys, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a weekly series where I teach you all the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Today, I have something very cool to show you guys, a plugin for Premiere Pro called Studio Plugins. Now, big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Now, normally we don't do dedicated sponsored videos, but Studio Plugins has both a premium and a free version. Thus, everyone can download it and follow along with this video. So today I'm going to show you how you can spice up your edit with this plugin. Now let's open up Premiere Pro and see what's it all about. I have already prepared an edit here, but it's still quite boring. You might recognize it from this video about sound design. Well, it needs some transitions and some titles, so let's see if Studio Plugins can help. Let's go to their website, which I'll drop a link to in the description down below. And as you can see, you can get a free subscription and a premium paid subscription. The free version will have less presets, but updates will automatically be added, so don't need to worry about that. Now, they were kind enough to provide us with the premium version, so let's see what's inside. Now, after downloading, we can easily choose which packs we'd like to install to Premiere Pro. Now, once installed, you don't have to import anything in Premiere. You can go over to the window menu and then go to extensions and look for Premiere Studio and select it. A new panel will pop up and you can simply drag and drop this between your other panels. Now from here you get a nice and structured overview of everything that is inside. Now first I'm going for a title to put in the beginning of my edit. So from the text presets I can look for different title animations that are based on either characters or letter animations, word animations or animations for an entire line of text. Now if you click on one of the underlying maps you get to see previews which is actually quite useful because you already know what to expect. Now you can also add favorites to the ones you like the most. Once you've made your choice, go over to the bottom right and select add. And this will add it to your timeline. Once it's in our timeline, we can head over to the essential graphics panel and adjust the text, the scale, the position and so on. Okay, now let's have a quick look at some of the transitions. Now I'm not gonna show the most obvious ones, but I do like this zoom transitions. And I know zoom transitions are used a lot, but these ones are quite nice because they've added an RGB and bulge effect to it. Now the glitch transitions are also very nice looking, and there's a whole bunch of varieties as you can see right here. Now I'm a fan of the VHS glitches. But onto some more original transitions, like these light leaks for example which are completely made with effects from Premiere, just like all the other transitions. They're really cleverly done, and you can easily change the colors of it in the effect controls panel. Now a transition that I'm also a big fan of is the cinematic rewind, which I've used right here. And I see you wondering, okay, okay, an insane amount of transitions, but what's so extra special about it? Well, they have also included sound design, so you don't need to look online for additional audio for that transition. And they are great! And of course, you also have the option here to remove the sound from these if you don't want it. Now, something else that you see in the list are graphics and effects, which contain a huge library of cinematic titles, lower thirds, callouts, social media icons, background, assets like smoke, fire and light leaks, textures and so much more. So basically, we've already got motion graphics, transitions with audio design, and a stock library. I mean, that's pretty dope. Now, as I said, we're gonna add some of these to our video and let's see how much it already improves our video.
Okay guys, of course I showed you a whole bunch of those transitions from this plugin, but I also have some tips for when you're using them in your edit. Now my first tip is to make sure to look at your type of shots in your edit and base the transitions on those shots. If for example there's a movement happening to the left, then don't place a right pan transition on there, it just doesn't make any sense. Now next tip, don't overdo the transitions. It's totally not necessary to place a transition after every shot. Use them to create more tension or more dynamism on specific parts of your edit. Next up is keeping a specific style of transitions. Stick to one or maybe two types of transitions and for example don't use glitch transitions on wedding videos. It just really doesn't fit the team. Also, if you're using those flash effects elements, then don't just use one. Keep on using them throughout the video to keep it a stylistic choice. I would also recommend to add transitions as the final phase of your video. First, create the entire edit. And you can always add markers in Premiere and add a comment for which type of transition you would like to add there. And once your client has given an approval for the edit, you can start adding those transitions to spice it up even more. And a final tip, it's always nice to work with transitions that you've downloaded or bought from the internet. But try and experiment with effects to create your own or try and recreate existing ones so that you learn how they actually are made and you can completely understand the possibilities of that transition. That way you have full control. Now guys, if you want to spice up your edits with a nice preset application that isn't expensive at all, then I highly recommend this Premiere Studio plugin. It's less than $8 per month and you get a huge amount of presets for it. So check out the link in the description down below. I'll see you guys next week for a new tutorial and as always, Stay creative.